Okay, I'm going to go over the Pegasus Touch a little bit uh, with you all today. I've had this since the middle of the week. Been doing some test prints. I try to keep something over top of it. I'll go over that in a little bit. When you get the printer, uh, it comes assembled, of course. But you get a build plate, which is... And it's hard to see because this is black, I know. Um, this is your build plate. So, mine... All four corners were just a little bit nicked uh, out of the box. Overall service is fine. This build plate is roughly a uh, quarter inch or six millimeter thick aluminum. These build plates are $150 a piece. Everybody likes to have at least one extra. Uh, at $150, it's a little hard to have an extra just if you're doing this as a hobby. But if you look at what you have between the block, the screw, and the plate, you can probably make one. I've already found a supplier for the plate. I'm probably going to uh, make one. I'll probably print this block out of polycarbonate on my Airwolf 3D printer. When I get it all together, if it works out well, I'll probably post up some files so y'all can do it yourself if you want to. But it comes with the build plate, uh, the vat which is when you get it it's wrapped in saran wrap and I actually rewrapped this one so I'll tell you why in a little while you get a 500 milliliter or 0.5 liter bottle half a liter of clear uh, resin because this is a laser printer it's steniograph the laser hardens the resin and it makes your prints uh, you get a really good, accurate print from it, which that was a test print I did before I showed it in my last video. And I mean, you can see there's no cleaning, no nothing. All I did was drop this in some alcohol to clean off this, uh, the extra resin solution and then just let it cure in UV light. Some, uh, you know, Put it in the sun for 30, 40 minutes. That'll take care of it. But the hose, everything are so precise. There's no cleanup. So, you get the printer, the VAT, you get all that. You get a USB cable, network cable, and of course the power cord. Um, you can download the software off their website. Now, I'm going to go over some stuff with this printer. First thing, when I got it, I opened the lid. You need to be real careful when you open your lid. Watch what happens. Okay, there you go. Do you see that? It's just, it, all the weight is on the hinges. You see that flapping? Those are plastic hinges with either acrylic or plastic uh, bolts. This, if you're not careful, you're going to break either the lid or the hinges. I've already printed a piece and I use that hole for a guide. But it's going to go right here and it comes across the width of the hinges. And it's about 15 millimeters wide at a slight slant, and it comes up about this high. So when the lid comes up, it actually stop, stops right about there before it, the hinges actually get sprung. So that's going to help a lot with that. The next thing with this printer, and I'm not trying to badmouth the printer because it does a great job. And you got to understand, they were trying to make a sub $3,000 printer, and they did it. But there are some things that can be improved. Okay, here we go. Watch here. Watch the lid. You see that lid movement? Okay, if you look at the top, that's not lid movement. That's case movement. That's the whole upper case moving. Okay, and the reason for this is, is you open this up and you get in here. In the back of this cage, there's one two there's three screws all the way up the back to hold this together in the front of this there's a screw here and a screw here okay you can actually see where the metal rubbed all right a spot weld or another screw wouldn't have hurt nobody and it would have done wonders for the rigidity of this case just that one spot right there and right there would have done a lot for the rigidity of this case. 
a simple spot weld. Um, I'm probably going to take and put some JB weld in there, clamp it down, see if that won't hold it. So, moving on. The, the next big issue I have, all of the connectors for this printer, and I do mean all of them, are right there. USB network, right below the network is the USB for the computer and then the power. And that's how it comes. Uh, I got that 90 degree uh, USB adapter at Radio Shack. And then I just put an extension on it to use for my Wi-Fi or my thumb drive for a quick disconnect. Because it's really flimsy. And when I say really flimsy people, I mean... Let me just express to you what I mean here. You take this. Okay, I'll grab the power one. Do you see that moving in there? That is the whole board moving inside. You can see it moving back and forth. I'm holding the power plug, moving it back and forth, okay? Some double-sided tape in there would have done wonders, guys. Um, this sticking straight out, I don't like it. I don't know why this wouldn't put to the back. Maybe a USB put to the front. I mean, a couple of ribbon cables. I understand cost. But I'd have paid you $10 more if this would have been moved around a little bit and been a little more sturdy. Because as it is, I mean, I've got some work to do. I did the 90 degree and the little extension for now and it's working. I feel a little safer with it. There's no on off switch. You either unplug this or you unplug the power cord turn the printer off. That's it. Um, when I redo it, this is going to get a 90 degree back and I'm going to add an on off. I'll probably print a cover that comes out right here and I'll just stick it to the side and then I'll mount this into the front so I'll have a USB out the front. I'll also include a switch in it to turn it off and on and probably pull these out the back also with small pigtails or extensions because that's that's too flimsy for me okay I mean that's just not that's not good you're gonna eventually break it if you're not careful so the only other thing with the printer that I didn't care for was and it's really not the printer I, don't, I mean I, I can't say it could be due to the case, way the case is. When you get it, okay, it, out of the box, it's probably not going to print the best. And I say this because you need to level the the print plate to the vat. The vat goes in here, and then you you go to your. Uh, calibration screen and you home your plate and then you got to calibrate it and there's a video on their website that tells you how and I have a way that's a little better I'll do that in a separate video but you need to do that and then once you do that lift the plate back up put your resin in your tank and put just enough to cover the bottom and let it sit for about 10 minutes and watch it and if it doesn't flow to all four corners evenly then you need to adjust the levelness of the bottom of the printer to get that to flow correctly so your print is consistent across because when your resin starts to get low you'll lose resin off one corner or the other which can affect your print uh, now for me I leveled everything the bed was great everything but the resin didn't sit level in the tray uh, my simple solution for that was I printed this on the Airwolf and it's uh, one millimeter increment steps up on the sides here. And I just lifted this up and kept sliding it in until, the, until it stayed level. Until the fluid resin was level across the whole vat. So once I did that, I mean, it, it, it prints wonderful. You know, I did check. My, my, my workbench is level, plumb. When I put the level on the printer, it said it was, but the fluid... Or resin was pulling toward the front of the printer and you know that that's not going to work you have to get it to where it displaces evenly so other than that the printer does a great job 
uh, when you connect up either via Wi-Fi, I just had a USB Wi-Fi USB stick I plugged in and it did work, or by the network cable and you load the software on the computer. It's probably if you if it's a new one, it's going to detect it, and it's going to tell you there's an update and it's going to update the firmware. So the other thing I told you I would say something. I put a towel basically over top of this. I mean. It's got a lid on it. There is a crack. You know, of course, there's an opening. All right. You want to try to keep as much dust out of this as possible because this is an optical printer. It prints with laser. With that said, there's a set of mirrors down in the bottom here. There's actually one mirror that, and there's two small ones controlled by servo. But the one up front here, the really big one, if you get a lot of debris on that, dust, anything, it can start to affect your print. You'll have little fine like pinholes in your print or something because you got to keep those mirrors clean. I'm not telling you to take Windex to them, people. Put something over your printer. You know, look at it every now and then. If it looks like it, take you a piece of microfiber cloth and just gently, gently, don't put your hand on it and press it down. Just lay the microfiber on it, drag it across it, and wipe the stuff off of it because those have to be aligned. If they're not, you're in trouble. Now, with the vat, it comes wrapped to keep dust and debris out of it. There is a layer of what they call PDMS in it. It's also Seal Guard 184. Uh, every so many uses, and you'll look at this one, you can see right there, it's like a ghost image of a circle. Okay, that's where I printed that rook. And I only printed it once, and it left that little ghost image in it. If that gets too bad, it will start to affect your prints because... It, it diffuses the laser. All right, so you have to replace that seal guard. Um, I've actually found another supplier of something, same material basically, but it's it's called something else. It's considerably cheaper. We're supposed to do the same thing. I'm going to try it out and see if it works. I'll let you all know. But when you're done with your print, if you're not going to use your printer for a while, you. You know, pour out the extra, uh, use a funnel, put it back in the bottle. Now, uh, there was a guy on the forum, he took a tea leaf strainer, you know, he uh, separated it in two halves, put it in the bottom of the funnel, and then you pour the resin through it, and any little hard particles that might be in the tray, it'll filter those out, and you got good, you know, the resin that's in here that didn't get hard is still good. You can still use it. Don't throw it away because it, it costs too much to just throw it away. So, and then you take a spatula, not a spatula, you take a, a little rubber um, kitchen utensil like this and just gently rub across the top of the vat on that silicone layer and kind of squeegee it down to get the extra off. Once you're done with that, Take you some alcohol, 91% preferably. Uh, most stores, what's available is 70%. They, if you look around, they'll have 90, 91, 99. Uh, I used to get 99 all the time. It's getting harder to find it in local stores. Uh, Dollar General Store has 91 for $2 a bottle. So get you some of that. Pour some in here. Slosh it around. You know, watch the bottom. Look for any might be hard particles. Slosh it real good. If you got a glove on, just take your finger and rub it to get the hard, you know, the hard particles off. You don't want to put fingerprints in the silicone either because it'll do the same thing as that ghosted image does. It will affect the laser. Okay. The point here is to have a crystal clear uh, optical window. The bottom of your vat, it's uh, around here. It's recessed so it doesn't set flat on the surface. If you scratch the bottom of this vat or get anything permanently into it optically, then this vat is useless, or at least that spot on the vat is useless. So, when you're cleaning this, I keep a piece of newspaper, and I just set it down on the newspaper, okay? Uh, don't even try to wipe it down with a paper towel, because paper towels are, well, honestly, they're pretty rough. They can scratch uh, most plastics. So, you know, if you've ever had a touch screen on something and you take a paper towel to it, you can actually get some micro scratches in it. You don't want that in this. So, if you use a paper towel, get it wet first. But, you know, 
if you gotta if you gotta uh, try to dry the silicone layer down here, dab it with the paper towel. Don't rub it because it'll just the stuff will peel off on it. All right, the paper towel will peel off on the rubber, and then you'll have a mess to have to re-soak it and deal with it. So, and then when I'm done with it, if I'm not gonna be printing with it for a while, either get you a large Ziploc bag or take some Saran wrap and put over it. Keep it clean. That's why I re-Saran wrapped it. You know, it sounds a little OCD. But these are things you have to do because this is an optic printer. You know, it's not like a filament printer where it heats up and comes out of this head here. This thing relies solely on optics and lasers. So if you're not an optically clear path for the laser to the, the print bed, then or the print plate, however you want to say that one, the build plate, then you're going to have issues with your print. So take your time. You know, use your head a little bit, and the printer will do you well. I'm going to, like I said, make those few changes in mine and see what it does for me. Um, the, the, the two corners up here with the, uh, the screw or the uh, JB Weld or something, that's, that's a definite plus for me. Now that the whole thing's built, uh, there's, gonna, there's not going to be no spot welding now. That should have been done at the factory. So... Well, thank you. Uh, I'll be back with another update later.